Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. I'm looking here at the intellectual combine over at Schwab, and I got I got S&P tech sector's forward price to sales ratio pushing up against this all-time high. Thank you, Kevin Gordon, for that wisdom. Joining us now, Lizanne Saunders has a privilege of working uh, with Kevin uh, Gordon. L- Lizanne, you do the best charts on, you and Yuri and Timmer, do the best charts on Twitter today. What's your most important chart that you're putting out for Schwab right now? Oh boy, that's a good question. Um, there's so many. Uh, I, I think it's labor market data. I, I, I think it's it's, claims, continuing claims, what we see in the monthly right. jobs report. I, I think that's the needle mover in terms of, of Fed policy. Can you correlate uh, think- Target's earnings this morning and very great disappointment on revenue? Can you coordinate that, uh, with, cor- cor- correlate that, I should say, uh, with the labor market? Well, I, you know, I don't cover individual stocks, including yeah, I not understand covering that. Uh, I, Target. But, yeah. but, you know, you have the, the earnings... Um, story this quarter uh, at the bottom line level has been better than expected, the beat rate, the percent by which companies have have beaten. But you've got overall revenue growth down around in line with where inflation is. So it it really has exposed the companies that actually do have pricing power and don't have pricing power. In addition, revenue beat rate has been below average. The percent by which companies have beaten on the top line has been below average. So I think this is increasingly yet again a, a sign of this by bifurcation happening, whether it's between nominal and real, high-end consumer and low-end consumer, um, services versus the good side, discretionary versus non-discretionary. And I think there's a reason why the consumer discretionary sector has been performing poorly, is we're we're now seeing more than just cracks in in the facade of the consumer. So, Lizanne, I guess one of the key issues here are the earnings that we have seen and again, we're going to get another big one after the close tonight with NVIDIA. Have they been strong <laughs> enough to support this big move up in equity valuations that we've seen since October? Well, you've got about, I think the blended growth rate right now is 11%. That's inclusive of the companies that have yet to report. And that is well better than what was expected uh, at the beginning of reporting season. That that's, that's getting there, but I think earnings do need to continue to surprise on the upside because last year's strength in the market was all multiple expansion because you didn't have much in the way of, of earnings growth. So I think the earnings do have to play catch up. Obviously, the report out today is incredibly important, um, not just psychologically, which which we know it's going to be important psychologically. But if you look at the, the overall tech sector, uh, the earnings growth rate drops from about 24 four percent or so 23 24 percent down to less than 11 excluding what is expected for nvidia so it it is it is obviously the the poster child but that has been the support for the tech sector which is the overall support for a higher valuation level if you look around the world one of the mistakes that investors make is they do valuation comps country to country region to region without taking into consideration what are the underlying drivers of the local yep. economy and when you have more of an information tech based economy that is support of all else equal of of a higher uh, valuation backdrop the last thing i'd say is inflation as a backdrop for valuations is important maybe not coincidentally the sweet spot in terms of historical valuations being supported at a higher level has been in and around that two percent inflation zone we're obviously not there yet even if we're directionally heading in the right way lizanne what are some of the uh, the sectors that screen well for you and your team here yeah, so we relaunched Schwab Sector Views at the beginning of the year after a two-year hiatus for a whole variety of reasons. And we haven't had any change in terms of the sectors on which we have outperform ratings since the beginning of the year. So it's financials, materials, and energy. Obviously, a very cyclical bias in terms of, of where our <clears throat> outperforms are. The two underperforms are REITs, maybe no surprise given the problems in commercial real estate. And then, as we already touched on, uh, consumer discretionary. Yeah. The rest are in that neutral category. Liz, how do you manage a bull market across the kitchen table? Sell in May and go away. That didn't work out. A lot, you know, there was a great chart. I, I don't know if, if young Gordon added it, Schwab, but you know, it's like we're getting back to you know 2006 ownership of equities, 60 some percent, whatever the number yeah. is. It's really great. We're all in on this market. How do you manage the emotion of a bull market 
on a kitchen table over a beverage of well, your Well, you know, Tom, that's an interesting question because, uh, you know, household exposure to equities is a behavioral uh, measure of sentiment, um, for, for lack of a better word. But you've got attitudinal measures of sentiment. And one of the interesting things that has occurred in the last couple of years, really in this sort of post-COVID bear market cycle, is that you get much bigger swings in the attitudinal measures of sentiment than you do in the behavioral measures. So if you look at just AAII, American Association of Individual Investors, you can see pretty big moves in a very short period of time, up in percentage of bulls, up in percentage of bears, depending on the near-term wiggles in the market, but you haven't seen much movement in that invested exposure piece of it. So I think that there is some complacency out there as measured by the uh, behavioral measures, but those attitudinal measures are swinging much more uh, quickly in this environment. What do you see at Schwab? What is cash doing? Mm. Well, I think for a lot of investors, cash is earning um, income. So you've got income and fixed income again. That's why I push back on this notion that the $6 trillion in money market funds is just sitting there ripe to jump into the equity market. I I think that's probably fairly sticky. And I think it's great comfort, particularly for more conservative or older investors that had to stretch for yield and move out the risk spectrum to not have to uh, do that. Um, You've got implications for within the equity side, um, especially areas like dividend stocks that um, will increase in in attractiveness depending on what yields are doing. But I I think a lot of that that sort of cash money is fairly sticky because it's earning a nice yield at this point. Lizanne, it was great having your assistant, Kevin Gordon, on, but, you know, you failed in one Oh, thing. he's more than that, but we yeah, were, he we is. Were, and I love that interview. Well done, Tom. We, we were coming out of it, and I said to him casually, I said, let's play some Nickelback. He didn't know who Nickelback was. Oh, the young lad oh, I, did not I know who Nickelback well. was. I taught him well, Tom. <laughs> he knows who Led Zeppelin is. So yes. glad so, he you better know that if he wants to cash the paycheck. Lizanne Saunders, <laughs> working with the great Kevin Gordon at Schwab. Thank you so much. I can't say enough.